Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question was Frederick, what about React Native? Do you think that React Native is going to reach the, reach the same popularity as React has for the web? So let's get into it. Well, in a word, no, I don't think so. But let me explain. You see, fundamentally, it's not a question about... In my world, there's a two-part to this. I think that the undertone of this question is, is React Native going to be a big success? And the other part of it is, is it going to actually be as popular as React is for the web? So let me kind of elaborate. You see, React Native, in my world, is simply a yet another attempt to create a solution to the fundamental problem with mobile development. And the fundamental problem with mobile development is that it's not universal. Nobody wants to support two platforms for one experience. That's the benefit of the web. It's one platform, runs everywhere, and it's supposed to be the same experience, regardless of what device you are using. However, that is not true for mobile. And hybrid apps are simply always, like that's, that's uh, fundamentally what they are trying to solve. They, each and every one of them, if it's PhoneGap, it's Xamarin, uh, React Native, or whichever flavor of hybrid app that you're trying to create, or hybrid solution you're trying to create, uh, fundamentally they're solving, they're trying to solve the same problem. But at the end of the day, a hybrid application is always going to be a compromise because I'm like, I mean, I know for a fact that React Native has performance issues depending on what type of mobile application that you are building. If you're building a 3D game, it's not a great idea to do that in React Native or like a high performance game of some sort where you have to leverage the GPU of the phone. And that may not be a problem for you, but it is a limitation just as each and every one of these solutions are simply playing catch up to the native phone now or the native the native platform the thing is that this is actually not a big deal for a lot of companies because a lot of companies will favor i mean they don't need high performance and they don't need certain things they simply want to have a mobile experience that and save time on development costs and maintenance costs and all the things that come with having to have two separate platforms now the thing is when it comes to spe specifically react native they are there are i mean there are there are success cases with react native so, I mean, there are companies who are making it work for them, but there are also failure cases where even some prestigious companies have turned away from it because they couldn't make it work. So when we answer the question, is it a good, you know, is it, is it a good thing? Is it a go going to be a success? I think that it's going to work, but it's going to be very dependent on well, basically the use case and the execution, which is kind of the same thing as saying that, hey, it depends if you're going to make it work or not. But if, it's, if we're going to fundamentally answer the question, is it going to be as big as for web? That's the thing that I'm saying definitely no to. I don't think so. Uh, currently, there is nothing indicating, as far as I can see, that React Native is becoming the de facto or the default for development purposes. I mean, Xamarin of all the hybrid application solutions is probably the only platform that can claim to be the default. And that's not industry-wide, that's simply because it's uh, the C Sharp and like the Microsoft community is so tightly tightly knitted that a lot of companies who are already using C Sharp .NET and .NET Core and so forth, they, I mean, it's a very natural choice if you're going to make a mobile experience to use Xamarin. But that is not true for React Native. However, so my guess is that it's going to be just a, you know, yet another solution to the same problem. It might be a nicer solution. I'm not saying it's not going to be popular. I'm simply stating that I don't think it's going to have the same impact as React has for the web. Because fundamentally, the problem that the Re React for the web is solving, the web doesn't have a good solution to. 
I basically React for the browser is a solution that we desperately needed, or it's, it's something that fundamentally changed the way that we do work, while React Native is simply another attempt to make a good enough solution to a problem which is already kind of solved. If you, talk, if you, I mean, if you want to make a high performance, high quality app for your phone, you will use the native device and the native languages that are supported. There's no, there's no lot, like apart from, as I said, this maintenance discussion, there's no really good, there's no good reason not to do that. So to me, I, React Native is not, so, it's not fundamentally changing the way that we do work. And the solution it's providing is actually not as great as it is for the web. The solution for the web is amazing, but for mobile devices, there's actually a lot of incentive to still use the native platform. Now, if I'm going to wager a guess on what's going to happen, I think that what's most likely going to happen is that the prog like the progressive web application um, movement is going to have over time take over this desire for people to use hybrid applications because it's the, the thing is that most of like a lot of the larger companies are creating are trying to create application like app versions of their web presence and mostly they're doing this because everybody has an app they think that they need to in order to stay relevant in the marketplace they need to have an app because hey that's the way a lot of people are you know people are going mobile first and mobile devices are having a increasing importance in our lives so they want to you know, they want to get in on that. The problem is that it's actually extremely hard to port and very few companies that I've seen that have these older legacy systems who had a web presence. I mean, most of them are struggling with just making a site responsive because of, you know, if they've been around for longer than, you know, 20, 30 years. So I, I don't see a lot, a lot of them succeeding in porting the experience that they have and the dominance they have on the web over to a phone. I've actually done quite a fair, quite a bit of work in this area and it is a big hassle to move that web presence and most likely an application that was designed and delivered and kind of intended to work for a very specific experience on the web over to a phone. I mean it's a pretty big and hefty workload so my guess is that progressive web applications is going to provide a better alternative than creating these hybrid applications simply because it's going to allow you to have the app experience without having to make a complete rewrite to make this kind of painful porting it's probably a shorter distance and a shorter time to market to keep a web press uh, to, to keep your web presence and retrofit that into a progressive web application that basically feels like a native native application. So what I want you to take away from this is that I think that React Native is yet another attempt to solve the well the plat platform problem, the universal the, the the problem for the for the mobile devices, which is that you have to support two platforms completely independently of each other, yet provide the same experience and although i think that there i mean it's a very nice way to do this i still i think that fundamentally hybrid applications is not go it's not going to have the same impact as react has like i mean i don't think it's going to have the same impact simply because the solution that is provided to the web the web doesn't have a good, have a good alternative for it's probably the best solution we have today while for the mobile devices there are actually better options out there the mo main incentive to use a hybrid application is time to market and maintenance costs and I, that's the cost value ratio there is good for some people and it's not so good for other you know for some companies it's going to make sense for some it's not going to make any sense and that's not big, in my world not a big enough incentive for it to become the de default of the of the of the industry have a great day